Will it be three tonight? Who wins the game? I have a concern of that Alabama. Roll, Roll time. time. Alabama. There's only one thing that's running through my soul, and that is roll. I think Alabama as a dog wins this game outright. I just, I think Georgia goes in there and gets the win. I just, I think Georgia wants to prove that they're the best team in the country. I think, you know, my heart's saying Georgia all day. I got to go with the Bulldogs in this one as well. But Alabama, man, if they can get, if they can get an early shot, they have a chance. It's the trash. This this was by far the game of the week. This is probably one of the games this, of the year. Um, this might be the game of the year. Definitely one of them. Probably until they play each other again <laughs> at some point. I mean, th- we we got what we thought we were going to get at the end. We got a very close, like, tight-knit ball game. It's just how we got there was crazy. It didn't feel right. Yeah, it felt weird. It felt, it felt <laughs> unnatural almost. It did feel unnatural. Because... Dude, Alabama, they go up 21 to nothing in the first quarter. Yeah, dude. I mean, early you'd been like, I, we were all, everybody was like, what the, what is happening? Yes. What is, is this a parallel universe? Did we all just wake up in a different land? Because, I mean, listen, it's not that Alabama's a bad team. Number four in the country. Always got to respect Bama. Obviously, they don't have yeah. Saban anymore. And that's like, there's just this, this different, like, air to the team because of that. Mm-hmm. And we all understand. But, like, it's still Bama, dude. These, these are still some of the best. You know, high school, if you know, college guys out there. Um, Jalen yeah. Milrow is one of the most explosive athletes and quarterback in the country for sure. Mm-hmm. And in Georgia, man, they found out quick, hard, and fast. I mean, so one of the things that Alabama did is I think Georgia was really concerned with Alabama's like interior run game. Yeah. And Alabama didn't really even try. Like they, well, you know, Kirby Smart said it, you know, at, at his halftime interview. He said, "Yeah, you know, they're doing a bunch of empty, and they hadn't shown that on film. Like all of that was new. And what Alabama was doing was they they were just hitting the edges early. They were getting to the outside, and Georgia, they were really struggling defensively to get off the field and to, and to shut Alabama down. I mean, dude, Jalen Milrow, he had." I mean, he had a great game, but he was, like, super Saiyan type hot in yeah. the first half. Yeah. I mean, dude, it, it looked like he was on pace to throw for 400 and run for 200 against yeah, the number one team and against the number two team in the country. Yeah. One of the best defenses, for sure. Yes. I mean, undeniably one of the best defenses in the land. I think something, and, you know, you were just talking about this, them hitting the edge. And not just hitting the edge, hitting the edge with the quarterback. I think there was just something different about that early drive, uh, that first drive for Alabama, using Jalen Milrow to be their designed outside runner, and it really just gave Georgia fits. It it did, dude. I mean, mean, a little bit of pushing. Yeah, push off right there. We Georgia. Aaron Smith had a huge drop early. That you know would have been a huge play for Georgia and probably would have set the tone. But I mean that drop, just you can't drop that ball. Um, look, dude. You know, I mean they're they're hitting the edge with a lot of success. Yeah, you know, and you saw it all. Like they obviously, you know, in the second half, Alabama's offense really stagnates mm-hmm. uh, until the very end. But. Yeah, I mean, in the first half, dude, they made up for it with everything they had. I mean, dude, Jalen Murrow, he completed 82% of his passes like, against I mean, Jalen Murrow. That was always, you know, kind of his thing is all we know he's really athletic. We know he can run, but it, he's not a consistent passer. What Kalen DeBoer has done for Jalen Murrow 
you know, just giving him, you know, the confidence to go out there and throw the ball. Yeah. And, you know, like, you know, teaching him how to be a better pocket passer. Like, I, I think that's huge. I mean, I, I think Kalen DeBoer, I mean, we're going to talk about this, Riley. Kalen DeBoer is one of the best coaches in the country. I mean, he's six and no against Steve Sarkeesian, Dan Lanning, and Kirby Smart. Mm. I mean, those are three of the top five coaches in the country. Yeah. And he's six and oh against them. That's insane. Like, that's that's not flukish. That is, this dude is a damn good football coach. Yeah, that's consistency. Six and oh is consistent. You can't deny it. All right, real quick, no. we're going to look at this play just because this play, just to show some love to, to the Orca brother. Yeah. Um, this is the early the early mistake here from Carson Beck. I mean, that's that's I mean the receiver, he, he doesn't that's a you know, he's not on the same page with Carson Beck. Yeah, for sure. No, there's definitely some kind of issue there, but Yes. You know. The this is one of the plays that all the uh anti Carson Beck people are gonna are gonna look to and, and give you. Um I thought I thought the Jihad Campbell interception was a lot worse. Yeah, yeah, for and sure. He just threw this it one right just to the right here. That one just happened. Man. Yeah. <laughs> we were just talking about it. I saw that play, and I was like, oh, there's the first one. Yeah. Um, God, you got to love a ball that's so obviously late, but everybody goes, ah, ball. Yeah. Boom. Jet sweeps. Get to the edge. Get to the edge and just walk in the end zone. Why don't you? I, it's the jet motion is some of the best stuff in fucking football. I swear, like it's so effective. Yeah. Whether you're gonna run the jet sweep or you're just gonna use the jet motion to do something else, like it really is. Like it, it's such an effective thing with the athletes that are out there today. Mm-hmm. But man, Alabama, they really just wow. That was I, that play was sick. God, that. It's, <laughs> It's actually cooler watching. I forgot about that, dude. That was way yeah. cooler watching it on replay. I mean, look, dude. They just they attacked Georgia's edges, and it was it was awesome to watch. Like, dude, it was thirty to seven going into halftime. And credit to Georgia, man. Like they 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 did not give up. They did not, man. Listen. I think the second half of this game shows that Georgia is probably still, I mean, not is probably, they are one of the best teams in the country, man. You cannot deny them. No. They almost, like, like, like no, no one else before came on the back. Like, truly, (laughs) uh, truly 28 to 3 caliber comeback. And uh, just, you just, I wish it would have happened. It would have been so funny. Like, honestly, it would have been so funny. They, they did. Like, they, they had the lead for 13 seconds, and then Ryan Williams happened. Yeah. Ryan Williams <laughs> happened, and he happened quick. Yeah. Ooh, there's Trevor Etienne. Yep. <laughs> Trevor, I mean, brother of Travis. Mm-hmm. Son of Travis. <laughs> Jalen look Milbert how is just look at how look at how dude that is a that is an elite that's a crazy Georgia run. defense full of freak athletes yeah and Jalen Euro looks like Michael Vick running I mean he really he cut he cut a video game line on that yeah he did oh honestly though I, at the end of the day like for as much as it is dude that stop that fourth down right there that Georgia got even though they just this is the interception. Yeah. Boom. Like that could have been so much momentum for him. Yeah. And Carson Beck wasted it. He wasted it. I mean, he just he threw it right to him, dude. Like Carson Beck has not looked the same the last two weeks, you know, because he struggled really he really struggled against Kentucky and then he, he didn't play well, you know. For the first half in this game, God damn I mean, that! If, if Alabama scores there, like 
Yeah, it, oh it's, man, God, this play, this game is just crazy. This game, yeah. <laughs> this game just <laughs> was crazy, dude. It Watching so it crazy. again is just wild. This was really like, this is prime college football, dude. This is everything you could have wanted from from it, dude. All the madness, all the chaos, the crazy plays, guys doing stuff that you just you don't expect to see on a field. Yep. And then I mean, dude, like this is, I mean, this, this was a safety because this was intentional grounding. Dude, just look, look at Alabama, dude. Like they, they brought like dude, you could tell Alabama was planning for this, both offensively and defensively, because they brought a bunch of different pressures and looks that they have not shown on film up to this point. Like they, they were ready for Georgia. They knew what the game plan was to beat this Georgia team. And they were not gonna show any of it on film. Nah, they really dude. I bet I bet the speeches, like the halftime speeches, are not the, like the pregame speech, like I and like practice leading into this game. Like just the concept of them like being able to fully open the playbook. Ooh. See, this is a waste of a trick play. You gotta hate when it doesn't. Yeah, that, that I wasn't a fan of that. I mean, you know, usually those plays do hit. You can't really hate it too bad because you got to try some shit at that at some point. But against a team like Georgia, though, it, it always does feel weird trying to hit a gadget they, play. They they've got too much speed to get, yeah. you know, too talented. To less. Yeah, they, you, you're probably not hit that. Yeah. I mean, and then this was, you know, this was just, you know, tempers flaring. I mean, this game looked over, dude. But it credit really to Georgia. You know, you have to give credit to Georgia because they could have easily quit. But, you know, Kirby Smart teams, that they don't quit. They're they're never out of a football game. And I think they showed that last night. I think Carson Beck just got pissed off at one point. <laughs> like, at some point, he was, like, mad at himself, mad at his offensive line, mad at somebody. And he was just like, all right, God damn it, we're playing football. I'm tired of this shit. I'm tired of it, Grandpa. Yeah, I mean, it's crazy. We're, you know, nine minutes left in the third quarter, and, like, over half of this video is left. Yeah. But I'm just going to go ahead. We're just going to watch the, the last little bit of this game. Yeah, because this game was crazy. So this is... I mean, this is if the, you're Alabama, that's the absolute worst time to let someone loose in your secondary. Yeah, dude. Busted coverage. Busted coverage. Carson's I mean, Beck, Carson Beck's face and right arm don't belong on the same person. <laughs> like, if you just looked at that dude, like, just a right arm profile, you can't see his face. You're like, oh, he looks kind of cool. Look at that sleeve of tattoos. And then yeah. you see his face, and you're like, what the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> you're insane. Yeah, dude, you, just, you, you, can't, you can't let him run loose in your secondary. I mean, look how much time he time. has. I know. Uh, my thing is, Alabama was so aggressive all night. And then like right here at the end, when it kind of mattered, they just stopped being aggressive. And yep. I think it's kind of what started killing them. Well, the other thing was offensively, you know, they yeah, they, they, also they kind of pulled a Kyle Shanahan. They they were they were snapping the ball with like fifteen or seventeen seconds left on the play clock. Like, dog, run the clock down. At this point, you're just trying to kill as much clock as possible. But then, Ryan Williams, dude, seventeen year old true freshman. That kid was seventeen, and he made two dudes kiss each other. <laughs> what were you doing when you were seventeen? Oh my god, dude! I mean, he really this did. Man, he made he made those two Georgia defenders kiss themselves. Hold on. He Hold had on six catches for 177 yards and a touchdown against maybe the best defense in the country. As a 17 year old, wait for it. He said, <laughs> "I want you guys to kiss." <laughs> hey, wait for it. He's like, "Hey, hey, guys." I want you to kiss. <laughs> I mean, oh dude, I, man! I I think that that is one of the you know the more exciting storylines of this college football season. 
It's just all the true freshman stud receivers that we have. Ryan Williams at Alabama, Jeremiah Smith at Ohio State, like Wesco you know, at Clemson. Yeah, Brian Wesco at Clemson. Like, I mean, there there's some studs, dude. There's some studs in this class for sure. You're, you're you yes. are a thousand percent correct about that. Um, <laughs> man, I mean. Jeremiah Smith at Ohio State, by the way, they played Michigan State. He had two back-to-back insane one-handed catches. Mm. Like, he's just – he's a freak. Ryan Williams is a freak, and he's only 17. Kiss each other. God dang it, dude. That's so funny. (laughs) He, dude, he is 17, and he made two dudes – oh, my God. He said – I mean – I like making people headbutt. Edge. And then it's even more impressive what he does after the catch. Like, I mean, spin look move. At that, dude. He hit. It's like he hit a spin. Like he hit the spin button as he hit the jump button. Yeah, <laughs> and it worked. <laughs> I don't think that should work. That shouldn't work. And then, I mean, this was just that's not a good throw if you're Carson Beck. Nah, man. Listen, the quarterback. Just absolutely chokes at the end. Um, I mean, you you see the corner. You see the corner has inside leverage on the receiver. So if you're going to throw it anywhere, you need to lead him and throw it over the shoulder to give him a chance. But you underthrow it? Like, yes, yeah, just yeah. that's that's a poor throw. I'm sorry. You're right. He did it twice. Big Dog's right. He did it twice. Why did he do it twice? <laughs> It's hard to know why he did it twice. If you're Georgia, how you feel about QB one right now? Kirby Smart. How 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 do you think? What's what's the mindset? Is I mean, it just a game? Back, They're just playing one of the best teams, or I I just think it's more Alabama, dude. I mean, the, the the you know the argument is, oh, he didn't play well against Kentucky either. But I mean, Kentucky is proving to have a great defense as well. You know, so. So, but know. isn't that kind of, isn't that kind of a problem if QB one doesn't play well? If you're Georgia, who is national championship focused, like yeah. that, if they don't win the Natty, it's kind of a disappointing season, which is a terrible place to be in because that is such yeah. a high level of expectation. But if I that's mean, the team that you are, and like they are, is it not a problem that QB one? can't handle good defenses because that's all you're going to get. That's fair. that's fair, dude. I mean, it, it's kind of it's kind of similar to, to Dabo. Like, you yeah. know, Cook defense fans Seriously. are upset with Dabo because he's a victim of his own success. And, you know, you guys saw this with, with DJ Ukulele. Like, DJ yeah, couldn't play well against good defenses. Yeah, no, we – yeah, listen, dude. It's, yeah. DJ tanks them all away. Um True. Taking down the ACC one program at a time. It's true. You should go play for Stanford. Dude, by the way, shout out to Florida State for losing to SMU 42-16. to 